Speaking of some serious issues, we want to make you think about one of them here on the 215. And that is the gun violence been plaguing this city for years. Mm. So the Philadelphia Center for Gun Violence reporting, they're taking an artistic approach. My name is Jim McMillan. I'm the director of the Philadelphia Center for Gun Violence Reporting. The short films that you guys have produced, the idea of doing something like films and using the arts to kind of bring light to and hopefully help combat some of the gun violence in the city. Like, what are your thoughts on that and why did y'all come up with that approach? Credible Messenger Reporting Project pairs people who've been affected by gun violence in Philadelphia with journalists with you know, a great deal more professional experience to leverage their combined authority to report on root causes and lived experience and possible solutions, but from the community perspective. I'm blessed, but on the other side, I'm also angry because I could have been some. I could have been another person. My life was altered with a bullet. My documentary was they don't care about us, or do they? In your the documentary you did, um, you followed the young man who was uh, shot in the head. Samaj. You both were. Both were shot in the head yeah. at the age of 10 years old right. and still had to deal with the aftermath. On the news, um, they followed him coming out the hospital. He had the same walk as me. He had the same scar as me. And I'm like, I have to meet this guy. I have to. When I first met Samaj, uh, I broke down in tears because he had a hoodie like mine, hoodie like me. Like, you get shot in the head. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want the world to see your scars. And there are a lot of organizations around the city, around the country, working on helping people in various communities tell their own story, rather than having a journalist who's not so familiar with them parachute in, tell the story, and leave. And I combine that idea with this idea of credible messengers in gun violence prevention. The idea that community violence prevention uh, initiatives are sometimes employing people with lived experience, people who've been affected in the past as, uh, as, as a, a co-victim, as a survivor of violence themselves. Here you will see three short interviews of three people that are co-victims of gun violence. Once the cameras are off and the years pass, these are the long-lasting effects that survivors are left with. So my project that I put together was called Lasting Impact, um, and it talks about the lasting impact that um, a, a murder ha has on a family, has on the community, has on friends. Um, my son was killed in 2017 during Thanksgiving break, and so I wanted people to see that lasting emotion, like long after the cameras start reporting, long after they moved on to the next murder, how it still impacts us. My son is no longer here. Um, he was 18 when he was murdered at what I thought was the prime of his life. A great graduate from high school, um, played football, just got accepted into numerous colleges, and um, it was me and my children against the world, and he was my, my youngest son and my middle child. So without him, it has truly changed the dynamic of my family. Every project has been absolutely unique, especially in the role of the, the professional partner or the professional journalist. In some cases, they've simply been more like a trainer and or maybe just an editor. In other cases, they've really become more like a, a partner, a mentor, a friend, and really helped the community partner, the community reporting partner, figure out what they needed to get the job done. With the uh, Credible Mesher Project, that drew everybody's attention. I could speak for days, but that's not, that's not really detailed. They don't really want really to listen to that. But if they saw it on the big screen, that was a big impactful way. Even after the cameras are long off, and years have passed, and I'm about to get emotional, is that people are still hurting. People are still broken, and people have to live with that person not being here for the rest of their life. We think that telling the story from the community perspective is more authoritative, closer to the truth, and can make a difference eventually. It's, it's a, a few steps along in the process, but we think it can actually help prevent violence, and, and, we, and we hope to measure our impact and prove that in time. Having these spaces, it's just, it's just, it's just so needed, and it, it, it helps, it helps us not become desensitized with what's happening. In Philadelphia, people are not scared to die. They're not scared to go to jail. They don't need telling them they're going to jail or die because that's that's an easy route. Being a survivor, that's the harder route.